As a last step, we want to also make sure we can test our controller endpoints that are behind authentication. So here I have a simple security configuration for the app that we just used to demonstrate mock MVC. So all HTTP gets to our dashboard controller are permitted. Next, our API endpoint for tasks. So we didn't test it actually is authenticated. And then here, our user endpoint for the user controller that we tested in the second video, we are expecting here authentication. So unauthenticated user are not able to access this endpoint. So with this in place and the Spring Boot starter security on the class path, so I've added this to our project here, we should now see our test case failing. So where we didn't have any security configuration when writing the test, they were all green, but now as we protect them with Spring Security, we should see a different outcome. So the first test here is green. So actually this is not a test. There we will just made sure that the different ways to create mock MVC are working. So we can remove it here and then rerun. And we know here for two real mock MVC tests and we see both are failing. So if we take a look at the first test, let's say the first one we wrote was this should return list of users. There we tested the get endpoint and wanted to make sure that we return a list of users. So here we now see unauthorized. So our security configuration is working as expected. And by default, if we use web MVC and have spring security on the class path, this smoke MVC instance will contain our spring security configuration. So we also have the benefit of making sure we can verify that those endpoints that we want to protect are then actually protected with a simple test. So we have now several solution to fix this, but first we have to make sure that we have an additional dependency inside our project. This is the spring security test dependency. So it can be test scoped as we don't need this for our production code. And this comes with some handy methods to mock the user. So the simplest solution would be here to say with mock user. And here we can then specify, for example, the username. And if we would have a basic auth or form authentication, we could also pass in here the password. We can also hard code any roles that this user should have. So here, for example, even though we don't use it here, uh, we could put in here this user is now user and admin. So if we also had a restriction based on some roles for our controller, we could also make sure to test them with this mock user. And what will happen in the background? So we will simply inject this mock user inside the Spring Security context that is used for this test. And hence we don't have to fiddle around with any password setting or any authentication first. This will just ensure that during this test execution, this user is the principal and that we can then, or that we now should be able to access the endpoint again, as we are now authenticated with Duke. And that's what we also see here with the test outcome. Our test is now green again. Hence, we were able to get access to our endpoint and returned status code 200. There's also a different way to set up authentication. So if you don't want to have your whole method use the smoked users. For example, if you fire two requests and you want the second one to be not authenticated for whatever reasons, you can also use this with method here on the mock MVC request builder. And then this spring security test dependency provides here these mock MVC request post processors. And here we now have a bunch of methods to use. So. For example, if all, also our endpoint was protected by JWT or an OAuth2 login or OIDC login, we can mock this all here. But for now, we can use here the user, let's say Duke, and then chain now here his or her roles. So we can say now here, this one has these roles. And then also we could set the password if we want to. But let's stick to this and then rerun the test. So this way we have a more granular configuration 
of the mocked user inside the mock MVC request. And let's take a look at the second one. So we can copy over here this security setup to our post request. And if we then rerun the test here, we still see a failure. And that's because it returns 403 forbidden. So it's not 401 anymore. So we are authenticated, but still not able to access. And the reason here is CSRF. So as we did not disable CSRF inside our security config, CSRF is still in place and our endpoint rejects this request. To now fix this, we can again use the with here. And there's also a request post processor that populates a proper CSRF token. We rerun the test again. Now it's green and we could mock the user and provide a proper CSRF token for our test execution. And with this, we are now able to test also protected endpoints as mock MVC has a great integration with Spring Security and we can basically mock any authentication method our security configuration uses and also provide CSRF tokens, for example, and tweak the mocked user with any roles or authorities that we need for testing our endpoint.